Can you hear the bells ringing? No? Me neither. But anyway, it's Kotlin time. It's time to learn about all of Kotlin's nice and sexy language features. Surprisingly, by opening up a connection to a database and trying to insert a couple of values into some tables. Let's check it out. All right, so me, ChatBrain's Exposed library. Exposed is a Kotlin SQL framework. That means you can create databases, delete them, insert data into your database tables and whatnot. And you can look up on the website, on the GitHub project website, how to include Kotlin Exposed into your project, or you can just clone the project I'm working on. But in any case, when you go back, as you can see in the POM XML file, I already added the Exposed library in the latest version to the project and also the h2 database library so that we can use an in-memory database and not have to worry about MySQL and whatever. Okay, without further ado, let's go back to the Hello World Kotlin file. And you can see there's four steps. We want to connect to a database, open a transaction and create some database table, and then do much more in the future episodes. Let's jump right in and create a new or connect to a database by calling database connect, get the import right. So it's not the H2 engine database, but it's the SQL database. And then you need a couple of parameters, which you can see here. And let's start with the lowest parameter options, URL string driver user. All right, so as always, that comes from the H2 website and a memory database called test. And then the next parameter would be, whoops, would be a driver. Now you can obviously put the driver here like so org.h2.driver. And then you'll see that is what IntelliJ does for you. It tells you, well, that is a driver parameter. But in Kotlin, you can actually specify explicitly the parameter. So you can say, well, driver equals org.h2driver. You could also say password equal, equals some password. Name parameters are really nice because now, no matter what ID you're in, you can see the parameter, you know that's the driver parameter, like so. And when you look at the function definition, the connect function definition, you'll also see something else. You'll see actually, let's pop right into the function definition. You'll see there's an URL string, which is fine, it's a require parameter driver string, which is also require parameter. And you can see the user also of type string, but has a default value. It's an empty string. So it's an optional parameter and you don't have to specify the user parameter. The same for password. And then there's another parameter setup connection. And that is a Lambda, basically a function just like in Java. And you can see it's an empty body. So it's also an optional parameter. And that's why you can get away with just saying database connect URL and the driver. And as you can see, you can mix it up. You don't have to specify URL equals here. You can just do it for certain parameters, but play around with it, see where the limitations are. Okay, so now you have a database connection. You hopefully have a database connection. We'll check it in a second. And now you want to open up a transaction. You can do it like so. And suddenly you see, well, transaction and there's curly brackets in here. And it says this transaction, what's going on here? Let's take a step back. And I'll just tell you that this again is a method, the transaction method, where you specify one Lambda as parameter. And you could, in theory, put brackets around here. And you'll see that um, the compiler says Lambda argument should be moved out of parentheses. So that's the Kotlin style to do it if you have just one Lambda parameter to the function. But we'll create our own function here. Imagine you want to have a function called register user. And then uh, there's multiple people being able to call your method, but in any case, uh, multiple clients. So they always have to specify a user like so. And then there's maybe your clients want to have different on success hooks where you say, well, after registration, you want to do something with the user, maybe send them an email or something. So you have uh, a Lambda, one parameter, you put in a user, 
And then you say, there's nothing going to happen. The Lambda has no return type, it's just unit or basically in Java terms, void. Now you register the user, so register the user, like so, registering the user. You can make, you can use the uh, string templating again. And as you just saw, that is quite a nice feature. You can use the Java shortcuts like S out. And uh, in Java, that would basically also complete to system out print on. In Kotlin, it just completes to print on, which is fine. And then you want to call on success. You call on success with the user, nothing too exciting. And now up here, people can call register user. You put in the user, and thankfully we have one up here from the last episode. And then you specify the Lambda, just like with the transaction. And in here, you might wanna say, well, it just prints out, or actually let's say, print out the name of the user. And we are in the on success Lambda here, like so. Let's see what happens. We run the project if that worked. And you can see we're in the on success Lambda here equals Marco, that actually worked. There's two more things to mention. First of all is you could put the Lambda inside here, like so. It's a valid Kotlin, you can rerun the code, but as you can see, you can see the code executes just fine. The Kotlin compiler says, please move the argument out of there because that's not, let's say, beautiful Kotlin. So you put lambdas here, and then you can also see that the there's one parameter to the lambda, which is our user. And again, it's like idiomatic Kotlin. If there's just one parameter to lambda, you can reference it implicitly with the it variable. So you don't have to specify it here. IntelliJ displays it to you, but you could also call it my user user like, so that's the full definition. And then you would have to change it down, down here. If you don't want to do that, you can just use, you can just go with it. But the last open question is, if you look at the transaction and register user, why is the parameter called it here? Why is it called this down here? And that's a quick exercise for you. And I want you to look it up on Google, just do a quick Google search. And now step number two or step number three, because we now know what the Lambda is, how you specify it, and it doesn't look as weird anymore. So we can just remove these lines or like so. You wanna create some database tables and we will do that by calling a method called schema utils create Again, it's a helper function of exposed, which lets you create some tables and you have to put some tables in here. You can see the um, method definition is just a function table in here, but we already cover quite a lot of things in this episode and I guess that's it for now. Congratulations, you already learned a lot along the way. Are you as excited as I am? Then let's continue right with the next episode where we continue to create the database tables.